Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a study video. I've been getting a lot of comments of people saying that they miss my study videos, but I am not currently in uni anymore, but there's a loophole. So as you may or may not know, I'm obsessed with studying languages. I have a thing for studying too many and then I don't like, I don't become very good at each one, but like I know a little bit of each one. It's probably not something I should, I feel like I'm exposing myself, but okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I really like studying languages. It's one of my favorite hobbies. And when you study languages, Languages, you're still studying. So for anyone out here that needs study content motivation for school Just pretend I'm studying like biology or physics because it would be the same I'm gonna be sitting in the corner of my room The only thing is that I don't actually have an exam But I might one day because there's language proficiency exam. So anyway, that was the longest intro I could just be like hi welcome back. Let's study languages again, but I did all that for a while I don't know so before we get into this video I just want to say if you're a language learner if you like traveling if you honestly just like using your tech in general you really should be using a vpn so i'm very excited to tell you guys about nordvpn which are the sponsors of today's video so if you've never heard of a vpn and don't know what it does it stands for virtual private network and nordvpn are like the fastest best vpn out there for example for us language learners sometimes there is a show that we want to watch and it just doesn't have the subtitles or it's not dubbed in the target language that we're learning if you connect to another country's server which you can do with one click on nordvpn you will have more options you will have a lot more shows that have subtitles and are also dubbed in the language that you're learning and for example there are just some websites that are blocked in some countries so if you're learning a specific language and you know that that country has a website that a lot of locals use but you just can't access it a vpn will help you connect to those websites also for all the people out there that are into tech nordvpn will encrypt all of your traffic so that your internet provider cannot slow down your streaming speed and in general nordvpn will just protect your devices from any hack or any of that type of thing. For example, when you go traveling, a lot of people say you need a VPN. So if you guys are interested, you should go to nordvpn.com slash analinks to get a two year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. And I promise you, your language learning journey will just become so much more interesting because you're gonna be able to engage in interesting content. Like you don't have to just sit there with a textbook. You can watch Netflix and learn a language. Anyway, let's get back into the language learning. Vale, empezamos en español. <laughs> No puedo. Por favor, ignoren todas estas cajas. No sé por qué me cuesta tanto hablar en español de verdad. Vale, voy a elegir un tema para hablar porque tengo que... Oh, wow, sí. No puedo. I have to challenge myself. How do you say that? Desafiarme a mí mismo. Es una nueva frase. Tengo que des... <laughs> voy a hablar sobre mi gap year Porque de momento no sé cómo decir gap year El año sabático Hace 15 minutos no sabía la palabra o la frase El año sabático Y no sé, creo que es un tema muy importante para mí Porque es una gran parte de mi vida Y de momento no puedo hablar de esta parte <laughs> Lo que vamos a hacer es Voy a poner un timer ¿Cómo se dice timer? <laughs> Temporizador. Anyway, I'm just going to repeat everything I said in English, but I'm going to set a 15-minute timer, and I'm just going to talk about it, like, nothing strict. I'm just going to talk about my experience, how I'm feeling, like, how it's going so far, and any words that come up that I'm just like, I don't know how to say that, any, like, sentence structure, I'm going to write it down. Also, like, any repeating words that come up, I'm going to write them down, because we're going to find, like, more natural ways to say it. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let's set a timer. I want to, like, show you guys the timer, but I don't know where to hold my phone okay chicos we have found a solution i've put my phone up on a ring light so you're gonna see the time go down so that you know i'm actually doing my 15 minutes because because why not also even though this is time lapsed i am going to keep my headphones on i'm going to be talking into my microphone because i feel like i speak easier when i'm speaking into microphone it makes me feel like i have something worth saying vale <laughs> vamos a hablar de mi año sabático Ya está. That was actually very useful. I've never done that before and that was so good because like I kept speaking and I was just like, I don't know how to say that. Like, I don't know how to say this phrase naturally. So let me talk about my gap year for like a minute. Mi año sabático empecé como hace tres meses en diciembre. Es un poco triste, pero no va como esperaba porque en el principio del año establecí muchas metas y todavía no he conseguido mucho, pero a la vez entiendo que no puedo 
a hacer tanto en tres meses y sé que es un tiempo muy... No es difícil porque ahora tengo mucho más tiempo, pero es muy diferente de antes porque toda mi vida he estado en colegio, en la universidad y ahora, desde diciembre, estoy libre. Puedo hacer lo que quiero. No sé por qué, pero esto me hace sentir muy abrumada. Like, I don't want to sound like dumb, be like, I have too much free time. But like, no sé, es muy diferente y I'm not used to it, basically. There's a few things there that I did not know how to say before. So, establecer metas, I did not know how to say that before. Fijar metas, fijar objetivos. I don't know, know anything in that side of conversation. And that's crazy to me because they seem like very like common topics. But it's just like when you think about it, like when I learned Spanish in school, like we would never talk about goals. So, to me, quite normal that I don't know this. But at the same time, I'm like, wow, this is like one of my favorite topics to talk about. Cumplir tus sueños. Abrumada. I've heard of that word. I never use it. I always forget it. So I'm going to make a flashcard and I'm going to keep saying it because overwhelmed is a word that comes up a lot for me. So like abrumada should be like one of my top words in my dictionary. Frustrada, derrotada. <laughs> These are such like negative adjectives, but they came up when I was speaking. Okay, so I'm going to write them down. Salir bien. That's like such a simple phrase, but I like I was trying to explain that like recently I keep filming videos and like they don't come out how I want them to. And I was just like, no me gusta mis videos. And then I was like, that's so like basic. Like I don't like my videos. Like that's not what it is. It's not that I don't like them. It's that they don't turn out how I want them to turn out. And then I looked it up and salir bien. No salen muy bien mis videos. No salen como quiero. That explains it a little bit better. So I'm very glad i wrote that down yeah i have some other things here but i don't want to make this video like an hour long so yeah for now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna make flashcards with these words and i think i'm just gonna add like some other words that are kind of on this topic this is a really good exercise i've never done this before i'm gonna keep doing this because i actually feel like i did more spanish in those 15 minutes than i have in the past month moving on i think i'm gonna order dessert <laughs> to reward myself for those 15 minutes My pizza got cancelled. Doesn't matter, maybe it's a sign, but I will get that refund. I will email them. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go to sleep because it's half 12, but tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna review everything I did in Spanish today. I'm gonna review everything I did in Portuguese today. And then I'm also hopefully gonna do Korean. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning. Oh my God, my voice. <laughs> Please hold while I set up. And hello, we are back. It's like 12.40, but I woke up late. Not that late. Today, I want to start with the things I did yesterday. So I'm going to go on Anki. I'm going to review the things I learned yesterday from Spanish. I'm going to talk about it for another like 10 minutes. I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. I'm going to talk about my gap year. And then that's going to like get my brain working. And then I'm going to review my memorized flashcards because yesterday on memorized, I learned like 40 new words or something, which is like, it's a lot. But at the same time, I'm like kind of, a, I'm very much a beginner with Portuguese so like 40 words it didn't feel like a lot because like they're very similar to spanish and then this morning we're gonna do korean there's these lessons that i really want to try there is this youtuber and his name is i don't know his actual name but his youtube channel name is called learn korean in korean and i remember i watched like two videos and i was like this is amazing because he starts from like level zero and like he assumes that you speak no korean so in the beginning like the first lesson he's like mm? Mm. you literally learn as if you're a child like he uses uses no English to teach you which is so smart of him because that means that any person from any country can learn Korean like it's not that you have to learn Korean from English you can literally be from any country because he doesn't use any other language he only uses Korean to explain and it's just like it's such a natural way to learn and I did like one or two lessons like months ago but I really want to do a few today maybe I'm gonna do like an hour of them because I have a good base in Korean I've been doing Korean for like three years but honestly like when I say that you're gonna think I can like speak I can understand no for me like my story with Korean is I basically like I learned the base like the beginning like the basic conjugation I have like a good amount of vocab like I know around like 500 600 words but I cannot like I cannot speak like three sentences in a row to you it's very very much like if I read I might maybe understand something but like it's really not there and also what keeps happening is that, like I take huge breaks like I would learn for like two 
two months in a row and then I would take like a five month break and then I would pick up for another three months but then for the first like two months I'm kind of catching up on everything I forgot so I keep relearning the same thing so like the bass I have it down but like I cannot speak whatsoever the vocab is very 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 basic so like my level of Korean is really weird because it's like technically like I've been studying it for so long but I really can't say I've achieved anything with it so I have spoken so much I'm gonna start I'm gonna start with I'm actually never mind I'm gonna start with Portuguese because if I do Spanish and then Portuguese I'm gonna struggle but if I'm gonna do Portuguese first I don't think I'll struggle because like Spanish is easier for me so yeah poner mi tempo así tempo oh my god i can't say that word temporizador 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 say it with me temporizador voy a poner mi temporizador vale puedo decirlo 3 2 1 empezamos mi año sabático cómo va y ya está I think I'm gonna start doing this more, like the speaking and setting a timer and like choosing a topic because bro, I see so many of my weak points when I do that. So, phrases of my 10 minutes. First of all, hacer un esfuerzo. I know the verb esforzarse, but like when I was trying to like get my point across, I couldn't say it properly and I looked it up and like hacer un esfuerzo is like to put in effort, which to me makes sense. Also, I don't know how this phrase came up, I don't even remember, but I, I said like be honest with yourself and like I looked it up and it was like, Sé honesto contigo mismo. Also, priorizar. I like knew that I said it, but I said prioritizar. And then I looked it up and it wasn't, there was no T in there. So I learned that. Also, I don't know how this came up. La escuela culinario. That confuses me because escuela is a feminine noun, but then the adjective is masculine. But I mean, whatever. I have a lot of like random words that I know, but like I just don't use a lot. So I kind of forgot. Like, for example, pasatiempos. Like, I used to think pasatiempos is something we said in school, but like nobody actually said in real life. But apparently that's the actual word for hobby and now i feel really dumb because this whole time i was like what the hell is a pastime like nobody in english says my favorite pastime because in school they were like pasatiempos means pastime but it means hobby like what let's move on to korean now i feel like these first few videos are gonna be really easy because like i'm looking at the content and like the first two videos are about like your name the second two videos are about like where you're coming from like what country you're from and like those things i already know how to say them but the thing is i really like how he teaches and i feel like i'm not like losing out on anything like okay maybe i already know it but i can for example practice my pronunciation so like i'll repeat everything he says and stuff i don't know what lesson to skip to like he might say something in one lesson that i didn't know so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do every single lesson lesson seven i don't really recognize like lesson one and two i can see it's like it says and then in lesson three and four i can see dara and then it says which means like country plus i am this person so like if you're saying like i am from latvia it would be like also please don't judge my accent my accent is horrendous and then lesson seven it says like the title of the lesson is like I don't know what dogil means I don't know what that means so maybe lesson seven <laughs> lesson seven I'll learn something oh maybe it's like your town because it says Gohyang and Gohyang is hometown that's what we're gonna do now and yeah I'm just gonna do time lapse because this is literally gonna take me an hour once again everything I'm hearing I'm repeating everything I hear something I repeat after him anyway um let's begin or wait how do they say it in the tv shows she <laughs> You guys are probably sick of this angle but that was really good i really like that teacher it was a little bit repetitive because i already know the content um but like if i was learning that for the first time i think that would be like perfect i'm so dumb because i was like oh i think lesson seven will be very useful because i don't know what togir means and i don't know what perlin means and i'm i'm so dumb because togir is literally in my flashcards it means germany and then perlin is literally conglish i don't know how i didn't catch that 
사람이에요. 그렇지만 하지만 라트비아에서 왔어요. There's like seven different ways to say but in Korean, so I don't know which one it is yet. That's something I always struggled with. That was the most basic sentence. But it's the pronunciation. Like if I read that, I fully it's like easy. But like the pronunciation, I'm just like I sound so foreign, which is fine. It's fine to sound foreign. But for some reason, when I'm learning languages, like accent is the thing that matters the most to me. But yeah, that is it for all my studying today. I'm glad I put it over two days because I feel like if I tried to like do everything yesterday, I would have not done enough. Whereas this way, like I split up my languages. I didn't do my Russian, but to be fair, yesterday while I was filming, my dad called me and I had like a 30 minute conversation with my dad and we only speak Russian to each other. So I can just pretend like there was no clips, but I promise you I spoke Russian too. And I might call my granny later today. Honestly, my Russian practice is just speaking to my family because I'm already fluent. I'm just trying to like keep up the language you know but i hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you think do you prefer this type of format do you prefer a voiceover format this format is so much more talkative i feel bad for my future self having to edit this it's literally going to be like three hours of footage or like four hours of footage anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the video i love you guys so much let me know what languages you're learning how you're learning them what resources you're learning and i will see you guys next time peace